Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today's makeup tutorial is on my go-to glam look, which is pretty much the makeup look that I'll do for any special event if I'm running out of time and I can't think of a creative makeup look, I can often go back to this safe option and it'll pretty much work for any outfit. Anyway, I really hope you guys enjoy the look and let's get started. As always, before starting on the eyes, I like to make sure that my brows are well shaped so I get that out of the way first. I'm using Charlotte Tilbury's 3-step Shape, Lift and Shade tool to softly fill in the sparse areas of my brows. Then, taking MAC's Lame Low, I'm spreading this all over to prime my lids with my Sigma 3D HD Precision Brush. The shape of this brush is perfect for working around my eyeballs. Then taking this neutral cream shade from my Tarte Lip Palette, I'm going to set the cream product in place. This will also help to blend out all the other eyeshadows seamlessly. For my crease, I'm taking Frappe Eyeshadow from Makeup Geek and I'm using it to warm up my crease and to further elongate the shape of my eye. And next, I'm applying this light brown eyeshadow to the outer thirds and then blending it into my lash line and well into that frappe shade we applied in the crease. And taking the Multitasker eyeshadow, I'm going to darken the very outer corner of my eye using a bullet brush. I love the Tarte Lip palette because it's got the most perfect neutral matte shades with the versatility of creating day to night looks. Now I've done my winged liner off camera, but I do have an in-depth winged liner tutorial for those of you who are unsure on how to perfect it. So after creating the wing, make sure you go back with the previous eyeshadows and make the necessary adjustments to bring the whole eye look together. And finally, I'm taking the black eyeshadow and placing it right in the outer corner and then blending it out with a clean blending brush. To finish off the eyeshadow work, I'm going back with the first cream eyeshadow we used all over the eyelid and I'm placing it under my brows as my brow bone highlight. Now after curling my lashes, I'm taking this mascara from NYX Cosmetics and just look at how tiny that wand is. This mascara is perfect for those of you who have short lashes or you want to simply add a small coat of mascara to your natural lashes before applying your falsies. Next, I'm taking my current favourite silk lashes from Artemis Lashes called Grand Affair. Now, I've worn these around 10 times now, so I'm probably on my last wear, but I love this style too much to throw them out just yet. And then, make sure to pinch the lashes so that they fit well with your natural lashes. Today, I'm using NYX's Photo Loving Primer, which actually holds your foundation well all day. And then, I'm taking NARS's She Glow Foundation in Tahoe on a damp beauty blender and I'm pressing it well into the skin. I love how this foundation keeps your skin looking hydrated, especially now that it's freezing cold here in Melbourne. Then after spraying the Urban Decay's Oil Control Spray onto a beauty blender, I'm going to press it into the skin as sometimes my skin can look a little oily halfway through the day with the Sheer Glow Foundation and this step just helps the skin to stay fresh. And before I forget, I'm going to go back to the NYX mascara and I'm going to lift the Artemis lashes with my natural lashes. This wand size is perfect for this, especially when you don't want to get a thick mascara wand ruining your silk or mink lashes. The wand is thin enough to only touch the base of your falsies. And to highlight the skin, I'm using Tarte's Maracuja Creaseless Concealer in Tan. And as always, under the eyes and my T-zone. And then I'm pressing that all with the same beauty blender I used for foundation. And then I'm going to set all those areas with my Anastasia Beverly Hills highlight shade in Macchiato. Taking my Hoola Bronzer by Benefit, I'm going to warm up the perimeters of my skin using the Sigma Small Contour Brush along my hairline, under my cheekbones and under my jawline.
And then to contour, I'm using the shade Havana from the Anastasia Contour Kit. And I'm going to define under my cheekbones and also contour the sides of my nose. To add a subtle glow to the skin, I'm taking a fluffy face brush and I'm going to sweep it across my cheekbones and also above my brows to give it that glowy, sun-kissed effect. And then to amp up the glow even more, I'm taking my Betty Luminizer from the Balm Cosmetics and applying it above my cheekbones with a Sigma Tapered Highlighting Brush. For blush, I'm taking MAC Gingerly and placing it in between my contour and highlight zones. And a little trick to get a prominent glow going is to gently spritz the ends of your brush and focus the highlight on the highest points of your cheekbones and you almost get that wet highlighted effect. But under the eyes, I'm using Makeup Geek's Frappe eyeshadow to warm it up like I did in the crease earlier. And then I'm taking the same dark brown eyeshadow from my Tarte palette on an angled brow brush to define my lower lashes. And then for the waterline, I'm using Max Smolder Eyeliner to give my eyes more definition. Here, I'm just coating my bottom lashes with my favourite Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. The wand is perfect in giving you that spidery lash effect. And then using the Betty Luminizer, I highlighted my inner corners and under the arch of my brows. I then sprayed a light mist of the Mario Badescu Rose Water Spray to set all the makeup. And then finally for lips, I'm using Napoleon Purtis' Velvet Revolution Lip Gloss for that perfect pinky nude to add a subtle pop of colour to the look. And that brings us to the end of this makeup tutorial. I really hope you guys enjoyed the look. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. And don't forget to hit like, share and subscribe if you're new to my page. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!